Welcome everyone to part three of my analysis and breakdown of the Epstein files. Now in part one, we covered Ghislaine Maxwell and what the report had to say about her. In part two, we covered Bill Clinton. If you haven't seen those, go check them out. They're going to be linked in the right hand corner of this video and you will get a link for them right now. Now, originally I, I planned to cover Prince Andrew for my part three, but I decided to forego that and uh, you know, put it off to part four and instead cover the redactions, which a lot of people were interested in. And there were a lot of comments regarding what the redactions meant and why they were there um, in the last video in the comment section of the Bill Clinton video. So I decided to address some of the questions there and basically break down what these redactions mean, why they're there, are they suspicious, are they normal? So that's what we're going to cover today, all of that. I have examples of normal versus suspicious um, redactions, and we're going to be breaking them down and asking why they're redacted, basically. And uh, yeah, I have some questions myself for the judge, which is why you see a picture of the judge, Lerda Preska, um, uh, above my head <laughs> on the screen. But yeah, so let's get started. Now, <clears throat> all of these documents that we're going to go over, all, all of these redactions and these these uh, pages that you're about to see, they come from the Virginia Gaffrey deposition that took place in May 2016. So this is the legal court filings. You guys can go read this yourselves. Just type in Virginia Gaffrey deposition May 16th and you will be able to access it on Google. So you guys can read this for yourself if you want to verify what I'm saying. So let's get started. Now, normal redactions. So re normal redactions are a, you know, um, a, a regular part of intelligence reports and court documents are basically there to make sure that personal information, uh, you know, names, addresses, family members, things like that. These are not leaked to the public, basically protect your sources. That's what they uh, that's what they do in intelligence reporting. And also when it comes to the courts, because, for example, in mob cases, people who are mobbed up and who are, you know, feel threatened by certain witnesses uh, could possibly find these people and kill them. So this is the reasoning behind this, these kind of redactions. So as you see on the screen, we got some normal redactions here. So <clears throat> here they blocked off an email address. OK, did you use any email address other than Redacted. So this is an email address. Once again, it's a contact information, not really relevant to any of us, to what we're interested in. Here, where do you live right now? That's an address, once again, redacted, which is perfectly understandable. These are normal redactions. And not living with redacted, this is a family member, might have been living with me and my parents. Okay, so you recall redacted. So these are all, these are most likely family members of uh, Virginia Gaffrey that have been redacted. And there are many, many examples of these kind of normal redactions. So we don't have to worry about those. Those don't really present any kind of developments in the case that we care about. So those are perfectly fine. And no, for the most part, more, nobody's fretting about them. Now, let's look at the, some of the suspicious redactions. Okay, so I got one of the worst ones that I saw, which is page 246 was completely redacted. Not a single thing, not a single word or sentence. There are some letters that are kind of um, appear here. Um, you can see here like there's a Q, two Qs here. That's about it and some numbers. But for some, whatever reason, they decided to completely redact this entire page. So that's that's very suspicious. Okay, that's like the most suspicious one I saw. Now, these are the rest aren't that bad. But, you know, this is really we, we, it's super weird. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what, what, why they would do this. I was, I was um, dumbfounded when I saw this. It's, it's crazier than any of the other redactions that we're going to cover. But nevertheless, it's very worrying. And this happened after the eleventh hour plea that was made to the judge. So that's, that's why these redactions happened. And uh, I want to say a few words about the judge here. That's why I have a picture of her above my head. Um, Laura Prescott has been a very good judge, as far as I, I can see. I mean. She didn't fall for any of the tricks that uh, Ghislaine Maxwell's lawyers tried to pull, which I covered here. Um, I mean, who can fall for them? Their arguments for letting her go uh, out on bail was were ridiculous, and I broke those down here. But nevertheless, you know, throughout the case, she's been a very reasonable person, done basically normal things according to uh, uh, following the uh, the uh, you know procedures of evidence, and she's been great. Uh, so far. So I want to say that outright, outright. I'm not one of those people who think that, you know, she's coming to some kind of nefarious actor. But there were some questions I had for the judge when I saw some of these. So let's get to them. Now, this is this is uh, one of these that I have a question about. So uh, the the government's case, basically, uh, um, Audrey 
uh, Strauss, who is the uh, lawyer, the prosecutor for the Southern District of New York, said that we're going to be going after everybody that's related to uh, Ghislaine Maxwell and Epstein and going after them to basically get them and try to find if they were related to the uh, nefarious activities that these two individuals were um, related to or uh, uh, were um, were doing at the time, if they had any associations. That's what they're trying to find. So that so given that given that being the goal i don't understand why things like this happen so here we go who answered the door so i'm going to pick up from the middle here uh the uh, this, this is a document the document says page 134 the document says who answered the door this is a question being asked juan alessi so they gave us a name here and then again okay was anyone else beside juan uh was anyone else there besides Juan? And then Jeffrey, and then the and then she answers, this is uh Virginia Griffey answering, Jeffrey, Ghislaine, and redacted. So I mean, if this this is this seems like a clear example of a person that's associated with Jeffrey and Ghislaine. And I don't know why they would redact it. That's my it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, maybe, maybe you can give them the benefit of the doubt and say maybe this is a person that's completely irrelevant to the case, but I just don't understand why they would uh, give the uh, give the name of Juan Alessi here and then redact this name. So that was kind of weird to me. I wanted to point that out. Now it gets weirder. So here's one. This has directly this has to do with the sexual activity that's alleged, the sexual harassment and, and molestation that's arrest uh, alleged here. So this has directly to do with the with the current case, and they redact a person that that's. That's in the same sentence as Sarah Kellen, who was another person uh, that was just like doing similar things to Ghislaine Maxwell, although she's pleaded guilt, uh, innocent. Uh, she said that she had not, no idea what's going on, just like Ghislaine Maxwell. But nevertheless, there's a name redacted here of a person that that was there, that was being victimized alongside um, alongside Virginia Griffey. So the question says, it was continuous. Name one girl that Ghislaine Maxwell had sex with in your presence. Amy Taylor. That's the answer that um, uh, that Virginia Griffey presented. I mean, that's a name that I know well because Emmy was always around. I'm trying to think of her name. Sorry, Sarah. Her name used to be Sarah Kellen, I think. She changed it now that she's married. So that's another girl that... that so Amy Taylor, uh, Sarah Kellen, these are two women uh, that Epstein... Uh, that Ghislaine Maxwell had sex with. And also Epstein had sex with uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah Keller, uh, Kellen, if I'm not mistaken. But there's a third girl here. Now, this is directly relevant to the case because we can talk to this girl, right? The authorities can talk to this girl and ask her if this actually happened. So we can try to corro corroborate, get a third party to corroborate what um, Virginia Roberts Griffey is saying. So I don't know why they would redact this. I mean, this this person has to be a part of the investigation. So I don't know why you would redact it. I mean, if you're going to give Sarah Kellen's name, you're going to give Amy Taylor's name and uh, you know, obviously, Griffey, we know, but why would you redact this name? It seems like this is a very material witness to this case because, it, it, because he, she can corroborate uh, Virginia Griffey's story. So that was suspicious. Now, another one. <clears throat> I don't know if you uh, if you participated. I'm asking if you observed her having sexual contact with another female. So again, directly having to do with the sexual uh, sexual harassment slash, slash molestation allegations. Another female. This is um, Virginia Griffey asking, and then uh, they ask again. You can answer it however you want. Now this is what she says. Virginia Roberts says, "Well." And the list keeps going on. Ghislaine and I and Jeffrey and blank participated in, I guess, what you would call a foursome in the uh, in the living room, in the uh, in the li in the living room in the main house. So this once again, like this, these are material witnesses who, that that are that were involved in the ongoing sexual activity. So I don't know why you would re uh, redact this. This, this person is going to be a material witness. She can provide evidence that backs up Virginia Roberts Griffey's story because she claims that there was another person alongside Jeffrey and Ghislaine and her having participating in the foursome. So I don't know why you would redact this. I mean, you know, I mean, maybe the judge has a great answer, but I would like to hear it because I haven't heard any justification for why these redactions have happened. It's just a, a regular boilerplate excuse of, you know, you don't we don't want to violate their privacy that's what they say but that's not a good enough excuse here because these are material witnesses to the case so 
I don't know. Maybe they're uh, they actually are still questioning them secretly. I hope they are. You know, to build the case. I hope they are. So let's keep going. Another one, page one ninety. Ghislaine Maxwell directed you to go have sex with blank. So here another redaction. This is so significant. This is so significant because um, Virginia Roberts has claimed that Ghislaine Maxwell directed her to basically uh, act as a sex slave and have sex with all these people, and they redact the name here. So if the whole point, um, the the prosecutor for the Southern District of New York basically said that we want to get all the people who were involved in this. This is a pr person that was clearly involved. Ghislaine Maxwell directed Virginia Roberts to go have sex with this person. So shouldn't we know who it is? I mean, obviously this person is going to be brought to court. He's he's going to be a material witness in this. He's going to be uh, not a material witness. He's going to be a, what do you call it? He's going to be one of the guilty party. He's going to be one of the people who had a forced sex, basically, with Virginia Roberts. So I don't know why. Again, maybe there's an explanation for this. I think all I think all the people who are who are the perpetrators of these crimes need to be known publicly, right? So I don't know why they would redact this. This seems like a really important part, and this is the reason people were speculating that this could be oh maybe it's Bill Clinton, maybe it's Prince Andrew. I don't think it's I don't think it's um well I can't say it's not Prince Andrew. I don't think it's Bill Clinton. Um, I personally don't based on what I've seen, but you know people have to make up their own minds, but. Redacting stuff like this make it makes it very suspicious what they're what you're trying to hide, and I know Loretta Preska has good intentions. She seems to be a good judge who's trying to serve justice here. So I don't know why she would um, redact this. I'm trying to be I'm trying to give the benefit of the doubt to her because she hasn't done anything to violate that benefit of the doubt. So I'm still giving her the benefit of the doubt. But this seems very fishy. And once again here, Ghislaine Maxwell direct you to go. Uh, so this is the question that that. Um, that was asked. All right. When did Ghislaine Maxwell direct you to go have sex with so and so? So another name redacted here. So that's very important, but we're missing it. And when you redact things like this, people are going to start speculating who it could be. And that's never a good thing because it's just shooting in the dark at this, at this point because there's so many people that it could be. So yeah, very disappointing. Moving on, page 190 again. Uh, this is actually the same one. Oh, there's one. Uh, there's another example here. What words did Ghislaine Maxwell use in talking to you and asking you to go have sex with so and so? It's the same person here and also here. Um, but yes, there was another. Uh, and then she said, this is what uh, Virginia Roberts said. We're sending you to a gentleman. We want you to show him a good time. We want you to do so and so. So this is what um, Robert says. Ghislaine Maxwell told her to do. We're sending you to a gentleman. We want you to show him a good time. So it's like a madam. There's a reason that people call her a madam because that's exactly how she behaved. So yeah, I, I wish we knew who this person was because it seems to be a very central figure. One of the people, one of the significant people that Ghislaine Maxwell forced a Robert to have sex with. So I wish we knew who it was, but we don't. So moving on, next one, page 200. So... <clears throat> Go, uh, so there, there are a lot of things going on here, but basically it's the same thing. More names redacted of people that we need to know. Go, uh, go to so and so, give him a massage, which means sex. Okay, so um, blank. Ghislaine Maxwell told you to go give a massage to blank. Once again, we don't know. Um, she says correct. That's your testimony. That is my testimony. All right. Ghislaine Maxwell told you to go give a massage to blank. Correct. Correct. Ghislaine Maxwell told you to give a massage to blank. Correct. Correct. So there's all the people, all different people, many different people that she was told uh, told to go give a massage to, which was um, sign language or not sign language, a uh, coded language for having sex. Right. So these are names that we, we these are central to the case. I mean, come on, man. I, these are like central criminals. They're they're criminals. They're basically people who, who participate in prostitution. Unfortunately, I mean, I'm not I don't I'm not one to think that, you know, I'm not somebody who wants to go hard against prostitution when it's done legally and not to younger age people when it's consenting adults. I think it's perfectly fine. But the law right now is against prostitution and this is underage person. So it's definitely a crime. So these are criminals. So they redacted the names of criminals that are central to this case. See, this is the stuff that kind of makes me question what the ju uh, the judgment of the judge because these are central people that we need to know. So again, very disappointing. Moving on, page 202. To have sex with blank, 
Mr. Edwards object to form uh, mischaracterized her testimony. So yeah, this, uh, the, the, the lawyer is uh, objecting here. To go ha have sex with another person, a key person that we need to know. Many places. Glenn Maxwell sent you to many places to have sex with so-and-so. And once again, don't know. It's the same person here as here, but we don't know who it is. And then uh, the lawyer objects. Um, uh, it happened at many places. Yes, you had sex with so-and-so. So it's the same thing. Once again, all the names of the central cr uh, criminals here that she was ha she was forced to have sex with are uh, cut off from the report. They're redacted. So I think it's very, very weird and uh, you know very suspicious for to for them to redact these central criminals from this report. Very sad, and I'm very disappointed. So. 202, once again, when did Glenn Maxwell send you to a place to have sex with blank? Once again, following up from the last one, same person, again, redacted. So, it's very disappointing. Page 216. Were you ever on a helicopter with blank and Glenn Maxwell as the pilot of the helicopter? No. Were you ever on the helicopter with so-and-so and Glenn Maxwell as the pilot? No. Did you recall telling Sharon Churcher that you were? No. Okay, so this person is not that central. It seems like they're talking about the pilot. Um, but nevertheless, th nevertheless, you know, I mean, why would you hide the pilot's name? The, pi the pilot seems like an, uh, like an extraneous person. And I don't know why you would hide it. I mean, you gave Sarah Kellen's name, you get Emmy's name, and you drop Sarah, uh, Sharon Churcher, who's a reporter. So I don't know why you would uh, redact this. So I thought uh, that's not the most, that's, this is not the worst case, obviously. It's just a pilot. But still, why would you redact it? That's very suspicious. It's very, like, weird. Not suspicious. Weird. Okay, I'll put it that way. It's weird. I don't know why. If you're going to drop Sharon Churcher's name, why wouldn't you drop, drop this person too? So... Whatever, let's keep going. Oh, actually, you know what? That is the last one. So I, I saved the least offensive one to last, which is the uh, pilot. But but the one I found most egregious was this one. The one where there's multiple people here that we know participated in basically having forced sex or, you know, whatever, commanded sex. Glenn Maxwell commanded the uh, uh, Roberts to give sexual massages to these guys. And we don't. all the names are redacted. So this was the most disappointing part when I looked through all this. And there are many other redactions, by the way. I just want to use this to, as an example to show you guys the types of redactions there are. And all of these, to me, are very suspicious, like I said. I'm giving uh, the benefit of the doubt to the judge, like I said in the beginning. I don't want to start out by saying she's some you know nefarious person like some people are doing. Um, I think she's done a perfectly good job so far. I just would like an answer, a, a legal justification, some excuse as to why entire pages are blocked out and why significantly important people like this, like this page, are blacked out, are redacted, because it seems like you're trying to hide something. And these are, you know, like I said, these people are criminals, and they and the public should know about them, just like we know about Epstein and Maxwell and Sarah Keller, Kellen or uh, Kellen and, and uh, Emmy and all these people who are, who are you know, in, on, on Ghislaine Maxwell's uh, payroll, basically, or Epstein and Ghislaine Maxwell's payroll. So very suspicious. And um, yeah, that's it, basically. So there were some some redactions like I covered in the beginning that were perfectly fine. This is normal, you know, par for the course when it comes to uh, court cases. You hide personal information, but when central figures are blotted out and redacted from your report, it makes people speculate. And those speculations, you know, always devolve into conspiracy theories. And to prevent that, the best thing to do is just to, you know, release the names of these people who are central in this. They're clearly criminals, so we need to know about them. So hopefully somebody is appealing this, these redactions, because we need to know who these people are. At least the lawyers, I hope, knows who these people are. The um, uh, the prosecutors for the Southern District of New York, Audrey Strauss and all her team, hopefully she's going after all these people, and maybe later we'll find out who these people are. But uh, you know, we might find out more information on Monday because there are going to be more um, documents dropping. I, I hope there are, but I don't think these names will be released yet. So hopefully we get them because these people are very important. And until their names are released, all, all these conspiracy theories are going to be swirling around the Internet. So in order to prevent that, you should actually release the information. So that's my plea to the judge and to the media. Please get her to unredact these names so we can find out who these criminals are. Now, with that being said, 
I'll see you guys in my next video, part four, which will be probably be drop dropping tomorrow. So with that being said, have a great night or morning, wherever you are. I'm in uh, the US. So <clears throat> make sure you subscribe for the next part. I'll be going through and making videos about um, Prince Andrew next, followed up by, um, of um, what's his name, Dershowitz and other people that are in the report that I think are significant. So with that being said, let me know what you guys think down below. As always, like the video, subscribe. See you guys in my next one. Peace. Thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end, guys. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to listen to and consider some of the ideas that I present in my videos, even if you don't agree with me all of the time. My long term goal on this channel is to get to a position where I can do political analysis full time. So if you appreciate the nonpartisan objective political analysis I do here, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It is the only way independent political analysts like myself can make a living discussing politics. Grassroots funding is the best way for political analysts to stay unbought and unbossed in my opinion. Even if you can only afford $1 a month, in aggregate those dollars add up and it would be much appreciated by me. With all that being said, I'll see you guys in my next video. As always, peace.